What's up guys, Gully Boy back at you with another review on my Lil Wayne series, and this time around, I sorta of broke the rules by skipping some projects. But I'm glad I did, as I embarked on a true gem in Wayne's discography. Right about now, I'm about to review possibly the greatest mixtape I've ever heard, which is Lil Wayne's The Drought 3. Now I want to start this off by stating that some of y'all Wayne fans should be ashamed of y'all selves. A lot of y'all talking about 500 Degrees was fire in the classic, knowing damn well that is nowhere near Wayne's best. I feel like y'all should have been the main ones trying to put me on to his best work, but y'all would rather defend 500 Degrees. Okay, I think it's safe to say that some of y'all Wayne fans can't be trusted, cause what the hell? Thankfully YouTube kept recommending me this mixtape as I've been listening to a lot of his music on the platform. When I tell y'all that I was instantly shocked by Wayne's level of skill on this project, I'm not lying. One of the main criticisms I had about the Carter is that Wayne's new improved lyrical style was a little bit too complex for me, but on this project it's not like that at all. This doesn't mean that he simplified his lyrics, it's actually more advanced in my opinion. The way Wayne sets up his punchlines on this mixtape makes it way more easier for me to understand, which is a major plus. Remember the chart I made on the last Wayne review where I discussed the types of lyricists? I said that my favorite type of lyrical rappers are those who are easy for me to understand, and Wayne is that type of lyricist is here. I'm so glad that he mastered his flow to the point that makes it more enjoyable for anyone to listen to. For those of you that never listened to this mixtape, the synopsis of it is Wayne freestyling over well-known beats. As a matter of fact, that's basically what this mixtape is, just one big freestyle, and it's enjoyable all the way through, as Wayne flows on each beat perfectly in my opinion, and the things that he says within his raps are also interesting. Another thing that I've talked about in these reviews is repetitious subject matter. It seems like I have to keep repeating myself, as some of you believe that I have an issue with repetitive subject matter. For the millionth time, I have no issue with repetitive subject matter unless if it's done creatively or if it also sounds appealing according to my standards. With that being said, Wayne showcases his talents to the highest degree, which leads to this mixtape having absolutely no skips, and that's a total of 25 tracks, not counting the intros and outros, but even those aren't skips. But with all this being said, I want to go ahead and review each track in order, as they're all 5 out of 5 tracks. There are some tracks on here that are major high highlights to me, and I'll talk about those as we go down the list. But that won't take long at all, as the intro to this mixtape is a major highlight for me. The question of Wayne mimicking anyone's style is now thrown completely out the window. You can tell that this is his own flow on this track, as he spent years mastering it. He's rapping over Mims as this is why I'm hot, and he absolutely destroys it. He enters the track with the Rastafarian flow, which he mimics perfectly. As he freestyles, the wordplay is there, and his overall confidence on this track is a 10 out of 10. He'll state that rappers can't mess with him and he'll rip anyone's beat. Well, he'll definitely rip this beat, making it no longer a Mims track. I'm kidding, but he seriously does murder this instrumental. Another highlight on this track is at the end where he concludes the track by telling us to welcome to the Drought 3 and he'll also tell the listeners to have fun. Is the Drought 3 welcome? Have fun. Fun is exactly what this mixtape is, as it's filled with amazing flows and punchlines from Wheezy. Wayne also seems very comfortable on this mixtape, which also leads to him having fun himself. All in all, this was an incredible way to start off this fire mixtape. On the second track, Weezy would rap over Nas's Black Republican, which also featured Jay-Z. Wayne would bring Jewel Santana for his version, and they did what needed to be done. The synopsis of Nas's version is that him and Jay-Z feel like Black Republicans, as they have lots of money coming in. Jewel would switch it up on Wayne's version, as he states that he feels like a Democrat running Republicans out of office. I'm feeling like a Black Republican, nah, I can't call it more like a Black Democrat running them out of office. Now I'm not that knowledgeable about Jewel Santana, but that kinda sounded like a sneak diss. And the reason I say that is because later on in the track, he'll also say this. We don't diss them, we dismiss them. Wayne would then come through once again with more dope punchlines and a sick flow, making this one a certified banger. Also, these two were apparently supposed to do a mixtape together called I Can't Feel My Face. I would have definitely liked to check that out, but I might be in luck anyway, as these two have done quite a bit of songs together, which I'm definitely gonna check out as their chemistry is great on this one. On the third track, I never thought that anyone would slaughter Beyonce's Upgrade You instrumental. Wayne flows on this beat with perfection and recites dope bars such as They cannot see me, they are like Stevie. I'm still spitting like a retard. I'm so motherfucking high, I can eat a star. 
You may not be a model, but I can front page you. Smoking weed by the acre. I'm a monster every day is Halloween, and so much more. Just like Wayne stated on the intro track, these songs are really fun to listen to, and he makes the experience so much better as he easily flows on these tracks, making them really enjoyable. Rich Boy Throw Some D's is one of my favorite instrumentals from the time period, and it still goes hard to this day. I've always loved the inspirational vibe it gave, and to hear Wayne rapping on it brings a whole new type of energy to it. It seems like Weezy is resuscitating these beats as he brings his own flavor to them. He'll impress me on this track once again with fire bars like, and I got the hardest bars, call me the warden. I am a vegetarian man, I only eat. And one of my personal favorites on this track, you know what's in my styrofoam, S-Y-R Up. I thought that one was pretty funny. That's another thing that I enjoyed about Wayne on this mixtape, as he made me laugh several times with the things he said. But this one is yet another banger, as Wayne kills another instrumental. On Ride For My Niggas, Wayne will destroy yet another beat. This time it's the Mr. Jones instrumental by Mike Jones. To be honest, this is no longer a Mike Jones song, as Wayne obliterates his instrumental for five minutes straight. I really enjoy when Wayne spells out his lyrics. Like when he says, My flow is nasty, like see why Phyllis. I'm pretty sure he meant to say S Y Phyllis because that's actually how the word is spelled. Either way, I think it's hilarious when he does this, but sadly, I think this is the only time we'll hear him do it again on this mixtape. The rest of this track is filled with more dope bars like My flow can part a C, use your head, or I'll take it off your shoulder. And I also like the two savage bars at the end of the track where he ends his lines by saying, That's Duh. Run up in your house and shoot everyone that's sitting on that living room sofa. <laughs> Now I want y'all to understand that I'm picking my favorite lines from these tracks. He says a lot of clever things in his verses, which means that you may have your favorite ones as well. This just shows you how raw he came on this project. No homo. The next track is a piece of history as Wayne introduces his new artist Nicki Minaj who we all would know will become a megastar years later. Wayne and Nicki would decide to rap over the popular Young Guns instrumental Can't Stop Won't Stop and they'll do it justice. Nicki flows nicely on the track with rhymes about her flexing along with her coochie tasting like mangoes. <laughs> Wayne would then slide on the track with hilarious bars such as Nicki says I've been rapping this what I've learned this all these other niggas pussy like dry sperm. All all in all, this was a dope track that showcases the early stages of Nicki Minaj along with Wheezy in his prime. We Taking Over starts off with a hilarious intro as Wayne says that he's the rapper eater and demands to be fed. It's me, the rapper eater. Feed me, feed me, feed me. No homo. I mean, he said no homo, so that's cool. But he then goes on to say, Damn right, I kissed my daddy. He forgot to say no homo. Nah, wait a minute. He actually did that. So I guess there's no recovering from that one. But all jokes aside, Wayne kills another instrumental as he takes on DJ Khaled's We Taken Over produced by Scott Starch. I really like his flow on this one as it's aggressive along with his delivery. Wayne would also state that he's the best rapper alive, which honestly I'm not mad at, as he absolutely goes bunkers on this mixtape. He will also recite one of my favorite lines on this track, as he states that he has a mind that a map wouldn't find. I feel like there are so many ways to interpret that one. This is why people say that he's the GOAT, and I'm not mad about it one bit. This time around, Wheezy decides to freestyle on a classic instrumental which is Rule the World by Nas. He'll hop on the track with more clever wordplay, and he'll also say a lot of things that crack me up. Wayne also comes through with horrorcore inspired lyrics, as he states that he'll kill men, women, and babies. Shoot mothers, fathers, babies. Now when I said this before, many people misunderstood what I meant. When I say that Wayne has horrorcore inspired lyrics, I'm not saying that he's a horrorcore rapper. I'm simply saying that some things that he says in his lyrics remind me of horrorcore. But all in all, this is yet another banger on this mixtape. On track 9, Wayne raps over another classic hip hop instrumental. This time he decides to rap over Rodney O and Joe Cooley's 1988 track called Everlasting Bass. This instrumental was ahead of its time as it sounds like something you will hear in 2023. Wheezy comes through yet again and kills another beat. When he said that he'll take a nigga's instrumental and make it a part two, he was in line. On this track in particular, I love how he comes through with savage bars that consist of murdering his foes. Wayne would also cleverly diss Gilly the Kid on this track with extraordinary wordplay. When them niggas left, I got a little bit chilly, but I just let it burn like the end of the Philly. We that boy said when niggas left eye got a little bit chilly. You know, left eye, the singer who was a part of TLC, got a little bit chilly, another member of TLC, but I let it burn 
Let It Burn is a song by Usher, which was released after him and Chili from TLC broke up. And when he says like the end of the Philly, here's where he's dissing Gilly the Kid as he's from Philly. And he also states that he's the king of Philly, which Wayne says he's going to let him burn. That was absolutely crazy right there. And it flew past my head when I heard it the first time. But on the second listen, I was like, wow. Now I understand some people when they say Wayne is a master lyricist. I 100% stamped this statement because that line was super sick. And it's also another one of my favorite lines from him. Super elite track on this mixtape. On Doe Is What I Got, Wayne comes through and kills yet another beat. And this time it's over Jay-Z's Show Me What You Got. Wayne would change Jay's chorus to Doe Is What I Got, where he starts off his verse by continuing to let us know that he's the greatest rapper of all time. Little Wayne, Weezy F Baby is the best rapper a lot. He'll also state that he takes care of his loved ones and he'll also continue to recite dope bars. I like when he says that he's the only down south rapper that could have been in the firm rap group along with being a member in the Wu-Tang Clan. He says this based off the skill he has and feels like he could rap alongside some of the New York greats and honestly I don't think he's lying as he continues to prove that he's the GOAT on this mixtape. Only down south rapper could have been in the firm. Oh, the commission on Wu-Tang nigga. This is yet another bang on this mixtape as Wayne also matches the energy of the instrumental. On C Down Low, Wayne would kick off the track by stating that T.I. is his brother and he'll also agree with T.I. when he says that he's the king of the south. This will then lead to Wayne stating that Tip is the king and he's the greatest rapper alive. He'll also inform us that he hasn't rapped on a Manny Fresh instrumental in a while and he'll also let us know that he knows how to kill a Manny Fresh beat. It's been a minute since I've rapped on a Manny Fresh beat. I guess I go ahead on the show these niggas with the dude one of your beats, man. And he'll do just that as he raps over T.I.'s beat down low. My favorite lines on this one is when he says that he has your girlfriend on his bus. I thought that line was hilarious, but the line that really bodied this track is when he states, That boy just continues to amaze me with those hard hitting bars. I'm not gonna lie, I truly do understand why he kept saying that he's the greatest rapper alive on this mixtape as he's proven his skill time and time again. On the next track, Wayne would introduce his new artist named Briscoe. Him and Wayne would then go crazy on Cameron's down and out instrumental. That beat is extremely fire and the reason to why that is, is because Kanye West was on the ones and twos. Briscoe would do exceptionally well on his verse, but of course the highlight on this track is Wayne. Wayne would destroy another beat and he'll continue to say bars that put that stank look on my face. One in particular is where he says, I tip the bitch she ain't coming back to work for a month. We cool. I also like the third verse where Wayne and Briscoe compliment each other. Briscoe would thank Wayne for signing him and Wheezy would take pride in his new artist by stating that he's gonna be the next big thing. Well, we all know that that didn't happen, but at least he's a part of history by being on one of the greatest hip hop mixtapes. You a real nigga dog, thanks for that. letting me in. Yeah. He in the game now when I'm betting he win and I'm the rap land. On Promise, Wayne would switch it up completely as he raps over another R&B instrumental. This time he'll rap over Sierra's hit song Promise, which is a much slower instrumental compared to Beyonce's Upgrade You. The thing that I like about this track is that you could tell that Wayne had fun making it. He'll switch his flow up drastically here as he matched it with the instrumental. The whole track is also Wayne shooting his shot at Sierra. He'll cleverly do this by infusing his vocals with hers. You don't need a super man, you just need a man like Weezer. And he'll also recite more funny lines in this. The one that cracks me up the most is when he'll wonder if Sierra is taller than him. I just love to if you're taller than me. Yeah, Wheezy, she's definitely taller than you. But all in all, this is a cool, fun track, and I'm not mad at that boy for shooting his shot, because she is a baddie. But I guess Wayne won with that sim shit she got all boy doing. Now we're brought to the outro of this one, and it's quite funny to listen to. Wayne is in the studio eating gummy bears while letting us know that this one is over and this two is about to start. He'll also state that if you pay for this mixtape you're stupid than a muff that was this one drop three it's about to be this two hope you got both on free if you didn't stupid enough. well i just might have to disagree with that as the quality of this project is top tier i wouldn't even be mad if somebody did buy it but just by knowing that wheezy wasn't selling this himself is pretty funny because if you're someone that did buy it what are you gonna think when you get to this point where wayne calls you dumb for buying it this is all pretty damn funny if you ask me. I also believe that the intro to CD2 is the same as the outro from this one, cause Wayne is saying the same thing on both of them. Don't quote me on that, cause I'm not sure. We 
We'll then get to the second song of this too. I don't know how genuine Wayne's affiliation is with the Bloods, but I'm pretty sure that he was low key on that 6 9 type timing by affiliating himself with the gang. But rather if his affiliation is real or not, he still destroys another instrumental on this mixtape. This time he's rapping over young Jeezy's I Love It. He'll switch up Jeezy's chorus by stating that he's blooded. Wayne would also address the rumors of other people writing his raps. And he'll also recite more clever bars, such as getting high on a yacht, call it seaweed. I also like the line where he says that his mom told him to get a nine to five, but once he got with cash money, she changed her mind. This is yet another banger on this mixtape as Wayne reps his gang, goes at critics, and showcases his incredible wordplay. On Live from 504, Wayne comes with a fairly quick freestyle over Young Dro's shoulder lean. He does what he's been doing on this mixtape as he presents more clever bars. One thing that I gotta give Wayne credit for with this project is that he's able to keep my attention as his new mastered flow never gets boring and his bars are extraordinary. He also flows very easy on these instrumentals, which isn't an easy thing to do. This is just another example example of Wayne showcasing all these incredible elements. I know I've been sounding like a broken record, but Wayne comes on this track yet again and murders it. This time he's rapping over King Kong by Jibs. A lot of these instrumentals really do show the time period as I remember when Jibs blew up during this time. And me being from St. Louis, everybody claimed to personally know Jibs. Either he was their homie or he was their family member. Y'all know how black folks do. Anyway, Wayne starts off the track by shouting out Jibs and then proceeds to take ownership of the man's instrumental. On track 19, Wayne shows his loyalty to his dipset homies while rapping over one of their beats. He'll rap over Jim Jones's when it's repping time, and he'll continue to do what he's been doing on this mixtape. He'll also constantly say the phrase Dip South, which sort of reminds me of Death Row East for some reason. But Wheezy will come through yet again and continues to entertain with that incredible flow and more clever punchlines. I'm so dip set, dip south, baby. If they don't like it, nigga, f you with a A. This boy is 19 for 19 right now, intros and outros included. On the 20th track, Wayne comes through yet again and raps over another Dipset instrumental. This time around, it's Dipset Forever by Cameron. This was another instrumental that was produced by Kanye West, and it's very heavenly. I might have to go revisit Cameron's Purple Haze album as I remember it having a ton of bangers. But Wayne would slide on this beat with a quick freestyle that consists of more clever bars that would have you going goddamn. These consist of... Keep something in the trunk like an elephant. Bet you remember it like an elephant. On the 21st track, we have another classic instrumental of the time. Walk It Out by DJ Unk was one of the most popular dance tracks back in 06, 07. Now, I myself wasn't doing the dance. As I don't dance, I boogie. But lots of people were. And the crazy thing about this track in particular, I remember someone in class saying that they don't listen to DJ Unk's version, as Wayne's version is 10 times better. Even in high school, I remember how kids were saying this mixtape was one of the best projects they've ever heard. I was completely out of the loop. But you know what they say, at least I arrived at the party late than ever because i'm on board with this being one of the greatest things ever created in hip-hop and oh yeah wheezy murders this track as usual like y'all already know the deal but wait a minute i can't get off this track without mentioning wayne's opening line i bought it out like sunna. I hope when we kiss we make you sick to your stomach. I'm not gonna lie, it made me sick to my stomach a little bit, but this doesn't erase the fact that Wayne bodied this track. On the 22nd track, Wayne would freestyle over a popular Swiss Beats instrumental called It's Me Bitches. You'll definitely know it if you hear it. Wayne would approach this track with some really savage and funny bars. I don't think I could properly talk about this track without addressing the Emmett Till bar. Yeah, I get my buffalo bill on, beating up your block, yeah, I get my Emmett Till on. Now, as I already stated in this review, Wayne is someone that I believe have elements of horrorcore in his lyrics, and that Emmett Till bar reminds me of something a horrorcore rapper would say. Like, I could see someone like King Gordy saying this. I know that it's messed up, but it's supposed to be, as that's what horrorcore is, shock value. And Wayne has quite a bit of shock value lyrics within his raps. But at least my boy don't got a problem with LG relationships. No homo, let him get they queer on. I mean, he does like to kiss his daddy, so it makes perfect sense. But with all that being said, Wheezy kills this instrumental as well, as he comes through with the dope flow and more bars and metaphors. On Boom, Wayne comes through yet again and raps over another classic 0607 instrumental. I definitely remember Zoom by Boosie being blasted through the hood. I also remember both Boosie and Wayne getting much plays in the hood.
childhood as both of them seem to be in their prime. So this is the perfect instrumental for Wayne to rap on. He'll get in his battle rap bag here as he recites countless gun bars that go crazy. He'll also substitute Boosie Zoom with the word boom as in he's blowing your dumb ass away with them heaters. This one is yet another banger on this mixtape as Wayne constantly brings that heat. On the 24th track in O Nigga, Wayne comes through and reps his hometown as he substitutes Jeezy's Go Getter with N O Nigga. He will yet again flow on another instrumental with perfection. He'll definitely rep his city the right way with more sick wordplay, making this yet another banger on this mixtape. On the next track, Wayne will come through yet again and drop serious bars on another Scott Starch instrumental. This time he's rapping over a track from the Young Bloods called Chop Chop. Weezy would yet again destroy another instrumental as he's now 25 for 25. On Dipset 2, Wayne will once again recite tons of dope bars over another Dipset instrumental, which is Santana's Town by Jewel Santana. I would go as far to say that this track probably has the most wordplay on the entire mixtape. He says so many clever things on this one, such as My words carry life like a stretcher. When will he stop? Maybe a minute after never. Set the clock. And that's just some that I thought were fire on the first verse. You will also find quite a bit in the second verse as well. But Wayne will once again prove that he's the greatest rapper alive as he effortlessly bodies this track. President is one of the major highlights as we have two Louisiana goats rapping over an extremely classic hip hop instrumental. I feel like it's mandatory for rappers who feel like they're spitters to rap on Jay Z's Dead President's instrumental. There are countless freestyles from well known rappers out there, and I can honestly say that I never heard a bad one. And this one has now joined the club. Currency and Wayne do what needed to be done as they rap bars about stacking paper. Currency's verse consists of him hustling on the block while being aware of the police at all times. Good day, officer. What's the problem? What's the problem? They looking for answers. I don't got, I don't got, got enough. Enough. And Wheezy tells the story of rags to riches as he reflects on growing up in the N.O. He'll talk about his struggle and how it led to him being where he's at today. As I previously said, this one is a major highlight for me as neither Wayne or Currency disappoints. Crazy is probably my favorite track on this mixtape. Wayne really gets into his creative bag here as he raps and sings over Crazy by Narles Barkley. He'll mainly reflect on his life and he'll talk about certain things that were crazy, such as walking around his hood without a gun. He'll also acknowledge his creativity in the first verse and states that this is what led to him being in the position he's at today, as he's now a successful rapper and he's also the best rapper alive. He'll also cleverly rap about how he smashed another dude's girl without catching any emotions towards her. There's just so many things happening creatively on this track, which is very impressive to me. And if y'all watch and listen to all my videos, then you will know that creativity is my favorite aspect of a rapper. Wayne does what he already did for 20 plus tracks on this mixtape, which is keeping me engaged with his overall style. This one is definitely a major highlight for me on this mixtape as it truly showcases his talent on all aspects. I don't know how it's possible for this dude to create a 10 minute outro with it being very entertaining. It starts off with Weezy preparing to rap over Robin Thicke's Lost Without You, only to stop himself in his tracks and states that the instrumental is perfect how it is. Yeah, I think I'm about to rap on this dude shit, man. This shit is perfect like it is. And I'm sitting up here saying to myself, no, it's not, bro. Kill that shit like you killed all the other Ones. But truthfully, this boy was probably exhausted up to this point as he already slaughtered 20 plus instrumentals, so it's understandable. Other things to highlight on this outro is that Wayne would say that Young Money is going to do it big in years to come, and he'll be absolutely correct as he brought forth two hip hop giants, with that being Drake and Nicki Minaj. I guess you could add Tiger in there too, but he's nowhere near Drake and Nicki's level in my opinion. But my favorite part of this outro is where he cleverly recites a bar without even rapping. He'll state that he heard that hip hop died, and when he went to go ask hip hop if she died personally. He'll inform us that hip hop told him. Did what the bitch told me. Did what she told me. She said. I'm lost without you. That was absolutely fire. And hip hop is definitely right. As Wayne bodied the out of this mixtape and i'm also upset at myself for not realizing this earlier but as i stated before better late than never in conclusion this was probably one of the greatest mixtapes i've ever heard if you're someone that claims to be a hip-hop head and haven't listened to this project i'll advise you to do so asap you will fully understand why people consider him the greatest rapper of all time as he's godlike on this mixtape now i've heard that wayne is someone that forgets his projects i think he needs to remember this one and put it on some streaming services if he already hasn't because this dude created a hip-hop classic with this one.
All right, you guys, I think I said everything I needed to say about this. One. I'm glad that I now finally enjoy a Wayne project in its entirety. I'm also glad I skipped through some projects as well to truly see how great this guy is. But with all that being said, this was my review of the Drought 3. I'm going to catch you guys on a lot more reviews, so stay tuned for that. GB signing out.